do I have to give up everything in order to be a believer? Or if we could word that another way, do I have to give up everything in order to follow Jesus? Hello, I'm Ken Yates from Grace Evangelical Society, and I'd like to discuss this topic with you for a few minutes. Sometimes when we read the New Testament, we see people who gave up everything in order to follow Christ. For example, in Luke chapter 5, we see the Apostle Levi, or the disciple Levi, who's also Matthew, and he has a very lucrative job, and he leaves everything in order to follow Christ. Uh, and then we see someone like the disciples who were fishermen. They left their occupations, they left their boats, they left their fishing nets, and they followed Christ. Or we think of the rich young ruler who Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sell everything you have and give it to the poor and follow me. And he wasn't willing to do that because he said he had a lot of money and he wasn't willing to sell everything he had in order to follow Christ. I hope that most people who are watching this realize that you don't have to give up everything in order to become a believer in Jesus Christ in order to receive eternal life. That is certainly a work and eternal life is received freely. It's by God's grace. And so obviously the answer is uh, if you want to become a believer, do you have to give up everything you own? The answer is no. And thank goodness that's not the case or the kingdom of God would have very, 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 very few people in it because most believers we know have a home and most of them drive a car and most of them have a job. Uh, but what about if I want to be a disciple of the Lord? That's a different question. Uh, being a disciple is a believer who wants to become more like Christ, to learn of him and to be great in his kingdom. Does he have to give up everything that he has in order to be that in order to be a disciple, in order to be great in the kingdom of God. When we look at those examples, for example, of the fishermen who were the disciples and left everything to follow Christ, or Levi when he did it, um, can we look at them and say, well, this is what the Lord requires of me? First thing I would say is that these disciples these fishermen and this tax gatherer named Levi, they were a unique group of men. They were the apostles. They were, they were the ones who were going to lay the foundation of the church. The requirements that the Lord gave them uh, are unique. And so we shouldn't look at them and say everything that was required of them is required of me to be a disciple. When it comes to the rich young ruler, when you look at that passage of scripture, Jesus was not telling them he had to do those things, had to sell everything he had in order to be a disciple. What Jesus was telling him was he was showing him that he did not keep the law because this man said, I love my neighbor as much as I love myself. And Jesus says, okay, well, if you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, then sell everything you have and give it to your neighbor. And he wasn't willing uh, to do that. That's what Jesus was showing him. There's another passage of scripture that comes into play here that I think of, and that's Mark chapter 8, verses 34 through 38. And Jesus says, if anyone wants to follow me, let him take up his cross and deny himself and follow me. Now, someone might hear those verses and say, well, that's what Jesus is telling anybody who wants to follow him. He has to give up everything and take up his cross. But certainly what the Lord means there is that if anyone wants to be a disciple of his, they need to deny the things that they want. Their dreams, their aspirations, for example, must take second place to what the Lord requires of them. If anyone wants to follow the Lord, the Lord is going to teach them things through his word that they do not want to do. 
and the disciple must be willing to deny his desires and do what the Lord commands him to do. Obviously, there's many people in the New Testament who still live in homes, who uh, Philemon, for example, evidently was a wealthy man, but he was a believer. So the Lord is not requiring that we give up everything in order to be a follower of his. But he does require that he become first, that his desires take precedence over ours. If you like what you've heard, I'd ask that you would press the like button. And if you really like it, press the subscribe button. And remember, keep grace in focus. Mm -hmm.